Good morning. How are you today? Uh, it is 22nd December, Technic Tuesday. How's things with you? My name is Karen. I'm here with Get Moving. There's my banner as always. Um, and Get Moving is all about helping people with mobility issues to get some exercise. So, of course, if you have a mobility problem, if you have trouble moving around, if you have, say, for example, a disability or a medical condition or something like that that stops you from moving as well as you hope, then Get Moving can help you with some good solid exercise every weekday at 11 o'clock in the morning. Having said that, because it's Christmas week, Merry Christmas everybody, uh, because it's Christmas week, we're only going to be doing it today and tomorrow. I'm going to take Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off because, you know, why not? But hey, so it is Technic Tuesday today, but because we don't really actually have a, uh, a rest of the week really as such, um, we're not going to do a new technique today. We're just going to go over a squat, the sit stand at the very end. Um, and we'll get back to normal in uh, after Christmas. OK, so um, as always, fingers crossed, the end of tech, uh, exercise of the week this today, we're going to be using resistance band. So I hope you've got yours ready. Go dash get it if you haven't, because we'll be starting again in a sec. Um, but because, as always, I am not prepared and I want to delegate as much as I possibly can to you guys, as usual, I want someone out there in Facebook land to give me a number between 20 and 30 and that is how many seconds we are going to do this exercise for so first person who's not a finger of fire obviously to put a number down in the comments there between 20 and 30 that is how long we're going to do the exercise for today okay so I'm going to keep on witching just for a few seconds until someone anyone it could be you it could be you John at 30 seconds so we're going to do 30 seconds of everything let me just set my timer give me two seconds there we go so 30 seconds of all the exercises today okay so it is chilly i want to get warm so we're going to get moving put this to one side for a sec we're going to need it not just yet but soon first exercise straight in marching on the spot if you're seated Marching your legs up and down like so. Get your hips moving, get your legs moving. If you're standing, marching on the spot like so. And again, stand next to a wall if your balance is not the best. Don't rely on it, but stand next to it and use it just in case. 30 seconds then of marching on the spot. Okay, yeah, all set. In three, two, one, off we go. Marching away quite nicely. Getting your arms moving as well, if you like. That is fine by me. It's going to help me get warmer, certainly, in my little, my little garage, my little cold garage down here. But get your legs moving. Get your arms moving. And we slowly but surely just get our body moving. Dead simple. But, as I always say, very effective. It gets things going. Now that's it. Time, time, time. Moving swiftly on, shoulder rolls. If you're seated or standing, it's the same thing. Rolling our shoulders back or rolling our arms back. In three, two, one. Away we go. Shoulder rolls. Or, if you can, arm rolls. But of course, whether you're standing or seated, because you can do this when standing or seated, it makes no difference. We're going to be sat or stood nice and tall, not slouched there. We're going to think chest out and we're going to think shoulder blades back. We're going to move them through a nice big range, as big as we personally can do. Reaching up, reaching back and reaching down. There we go. Back to legs again. If you're seated, kicking them out, kicking the feet out like so. If we're standing, Kicking the feet back, like so. Again, balance is going to be a thing here. So again, stand close to something solid if you need. But 30 seconds worth in three, two, one. Go, go, go. Kicking them back. Or, if you're seated, kicking them out. Just in shot there. One or the other, your choice which. But as big a move as you can personally do. Now again, some of you will have less movement than others. Not a problem. Do the best that you can do and we're all good. But nice, big moves if you can. Keep it flowing. 
keep the blood flowing, keep the body moving. Time, time, time. Twisty series. Apparently it's twisty, not twisted. I got it wrong all this time. So, say hello to Twisty Sarahs, sitting tall, uh, arms folded, a big twist one way or a big twist the other way. But again, actually, you can do this seated or standing. I'm going to let you decide which, okay? Three, two, one. Away we go. Twist and twist and twist. We're letting the spine move inside our body there. And don't forget, it's our muscles, our stomach muscles in this case, which is doing the actual moving, which is uh, powering the moving. So our stomach muscles are working to move our spine around one direction and then the other. So big moves is what we're after. Get as much mobility as you can. There we go. Time, time, time. Twisty Sarah's done. So now it is time for the exercise of the week at the end now. So get your resistance band. You're going to loop it around or, or secure it, anchor it somewhere solid. Doesn't matter where, as long as it is solid. It's not going to break or snap or slip or anything like that. It is going to be behind us. Holding on one arm. It could be a good arm, bad arm, whatever. But the anchor point is behind. I'm going to twist and punch and then control return. 30 seconds worth on this one side, and then we'll do 30 seconds on the other side. Hope you're all set up by now. In three, two, one, off we go. Punch and twist, hold for a second, and then recover. Punch and twist, hold for a second, and recover. A nice big movement through the body, through the arm. If we're sat down, don't be relying on the seat rest behind us. Sit forward and away from the backrest of your chair. Be as self-reliant as you can possibly be. Control and work your muscles and not rely on the chair. That's 30 seconds there. Same thing on the other side. So I'm going to swap sides. Now again, you may well have a good side and a bad side. Do what you can on your bad side, okay? It may not be all, but do what you can. But... Other side now, are you ready? In three, two, one, off we go. Punch and twist, hold for a sec, and then recover. A good punch and twist, hold it for a sec, and recover. We're getting as much body movement as we can. A nice big move, nice big twist, and recover. And again, if you're seated, I say this all the time, I mean it, don't rely on the backrest. Sit forwards and sit away from that backrest. Nice big move. And that's our time there. And that is the exercise of the week. So we put that resistance band away for now. We don't need it no more today. Next exercise, moving on. Uh, double tap. If you are seated, sit tall. Get that knee up twice. And the same thing on the side. Twice and swapping over, a double tap, okay? If we're standing, balance time. Standing nice and tall. Again, we are gonna lose our balance a little bit here if you're not too careful. So stand close to something secure just in case. But a double tap and knee comes up one, two, and then recover. One, two, and then down. Are you ready? Three, two, one, off we go. Twice there and twice there. Now you can go faster than me, you can go slower than me, you can do a smaller move if you want, or you can do a bigger move if you want. It's entirely up to you, as long as you are shifting that center of gravity from one side and then to the other, and you're using your balance, you're challenging your balance, and getting those legs up twice at a time. Just like so. And that's it. That's our 30 seconds done. So now, bendianas. We've done twisty seras. Bendianas. Seated or standing, it is entirely up to you. One arm definitely goes down. If you can, the other arm comes up over the top. And the same on the other side. Again, moving the spine, keeping it mobile, keeping it moving. 
30 seconds in three, two, one. Off we go. Bending, stretching, and the same other side. Bending, stretching, and swapping over. Nice big moves. Stretching along this outside here, hopefully. Feeling your back, your spine. I was gonna say flopping side to side. It's not flopping side to side. Bending under control side to side. Don't want floppy stuff. Don't want floppy spines. That's no fun for anybody. And there we go. Time, time, time. Squats and sit stands. So this one we're going to spend a little bit more time at the end of the session. So if you're unsure about this, do what you can now. We'll go over again at the end of the session. But see if you are seated, tuck your feet back, tilt your body weight forwards, stand nice and tall and under control. You sit back down. Okay. If you are standing, squat time. And so, again, sit the bum back and down onto an imaginary chair and then stand back up again. So, again, we'll be going over a bit more detail at the end of the session, but 30 seconds for now. Three, two, one, off we go. Sitting back, sitting down, standing tall, and then repeat. Using your leg muscles as much as possible. And keeping your body moving, keeping your heart rate going nicely. The bigger the move, the harder. So a smaller move is easier. A bigger move is harder. You do what you can do. You do whatever pace is good for you. And that's our 30 seconds. So that's call that one time. Tight ropes and ankles. If you are seated, these ankle joints, get them moving as much as you possibly can. Uh, I was training with somebody yesterday. Not a lot of movement in the ankles. That's fine. We're going to maximize as much as we can. Okay. So we're going to get the heel to touch the floor and then point the toes, point the foot and get the toes to touch the floor and then the heels and then the toes. Even if it is only a tiny, tiny movement, do that. Use it or lose it, basically. That's what we're doing here. We're going to hold on to as much movement as we possibly can in all the joints, in this particular, at this moment, the ankle joints. Do whatever you can, okay? If we're standing, tightrope walking. Feet apart is easier. Feet narrow is harder. Imaginary line painted on the floor like a tightrope. And we're going to walk along it, heel toe. With me. Off you go. Heel toe, heel toe. Balancing as we go. Again, let your arms move, swing, sway. Let them shift in and out. We're shifting our center of gravity when we move our arms. And that is what keeping a balance is all about. Moving backwards now, same thing. Toes, heels, toes, heels. Again, letting your arms move. Shift that central gravity one way or the other to counterbalance. If, we, if we're falling one way, we shift our central gravity the other way. And that helps drag us back onto, onto line. One more time, okay? Forwards, away we go. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Balancing away nicely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Using the arms in and out. Pull them in and out. Use the other leg if you want to, again... All these things shift our central gravity around so that we can stay as upright and straight as we can. Last time, moving backwards. Toes, heels, toes, heels. Again, keeping our balance. Shifting our weight around. Keeping our central gravity over that supporting foot. Moving. Wobbling as much as you want. And there we go. Time. Last couple of things now, fast feet. I'm going to change my timer for this one, obviously. 10 seconds. There we go, 10 seconds worth. So if you are seated, get your feet moving quickly. Running on the spot, essentially. So if you're seated, as much of a movement and as quick a movement as you personally can do. So again, even if you don't have much uh, movement on your legs, get what you can out of them. So we're going to aim to do running on the spot 
If you can do better than me, fantastic. If you can't do as good as me, it doesn't matter. Do the best that you personally can do. Don't give up, okay? If we're standing, same idea, running on the spot. And it's the same idea. Doesn't matter how good or bad you are, do it the best you can. Hold on to as much speed as you So we're gonna do two rounds of 10 seconds, okay? Get your feet ready for quickness. And three, two, one, off we go. Running on the spot, getting your feet moving up and down, nice and quick. That is round one. So I stress this as much as I possibly can. Doesn't matter how quick or slow you can do it. Do the best you can. Get stuck in, move your legs as quick as you possibly can. Hold on to as much speed as you possibly can. We're gonna do it one more time, okay? In three, two, one, off we go. Running on the spot. Get your feet up and down, nice and speedy. And there we go, that's it. And then the last bit of the exercise now, shadow boxing. I'm gonna change my timer again, back up to 30 seconds. We're gonna do three rounds of 30 seconds. Shadow boxing. If you are seated, fist up, punching high, punching low, punching around, punching up, punching down, elbows, whatever you want, but you get your heart rate up, get your body moving and get heavy breathing. If you're standing, moving your feet, shadow boxing as we go. Are you ready? In three, two, one, off we go. So getting your heart rate going, punching away high, so don't forget, you can punch high, you can punch lower, you can punch around the corner, you can punch upwards, I don't mind, but keep yourself moving as best that you personally can do. That's time, time, time. So that is round one. We've got two rounds left. Again, the whole point of this is to get out of breath, get your heart pumping, get huffing and puffing. So do whatever you can to do that same thing again, okay? Fast, hard, and in this one seated, just to show you it can be done. Seated, round two in three, two, one, off we go. Punching away. Again, you can change target higher or lower. Change angles around the side, but notice how my body is twisting. As I punch, my chest, my shoulders, everything is, my whole body is getting behind these punches. And that's what I want you to do too, because that's gonna make you more out of breath. Time, time, time. The last one now, last bit. The whole point of this, this particular exercise is to get out of breath. Do everything you can to make that happen. Last 30 seconds. Three, two, one, off we go. Punching away. Moving your body, moving your feet, moving your arms. You can change direction. Picture whoever you want. Doesn't matter who it is. Picture that person you don't like and they are standing in front of you. And knock them flat. And time, time, time. There we go. That is our shadow boxing done and dusted. So, as I say, because we're only here again tomorrow, because then it's Christmas, we're taking a couple of days off, we don't actually have much of a week left. And so, we're not gonna have a, a proper exercise of the week, but we're gonna go over the sit stand, the squats. It's gonna take two minutes just to go over the details there. We'll remind us what we're doing, what not to do, have some common mistakes, stuff like that. So if you have, if you want to improve your sit stand, if you wanna improve your squats, 
Take two minutes, have a look at this. Practice it now, practice through the day. Rewatch this as much as you want to get stuck in. Okay. So first of all, the sit stand. If you are seated, if you have trouble standing up tall, um, the sit stand is a really, really vital exercise. Just because it's difficult does not mean that we shouldn't do it. We need to make sure it's safe. But if it's difficult, that's all the more reason to do it. We get good at what we do. Okay, so sit stand. Now I say it in shorthand every week, but it, I mean it is true. We've got to get our feet underneath our body. We are never, no one is ever going to stand up with our feet out there somewhere and our weight back here. It is never going to happen. So we need to pull these feet underneath us. When I was talking about the, the tightrope walking, I was talking about getting the central gravity over our feet. This is what it's all about. Our central gravity is pretty much around about where our bums are for all of us. It's pretty much our central gravity is pretty much where our bums are. We need to get that central gravity over our feet. And that's why we pull the feet back and we tilt the body forwards. By doing that straight away, you can see pretty much my bum is starting to just come off the deck. If I tilt forwards enough, my bum starts to come off the deck. Okay, and that's kind of what we're after. We want our bum coming off the deck. So feet back, body weight forwards, feel the weight start to push down through our feet there. If you want, use your hands, but I've seen too many people forget about their legs entirely and just becomes wholly reliant on pushing with the arms and, and that will get us an inch or two up but then what our arms are not six foot long our arms are not going to get us up so we must use our legs as much as we can so body weight forwards use the hands to help but it is a leg drive we push down into the ground a weird way of thinking about it is don't think of standing up Think about pushing down into the floor. Imagine you're standing on the floorboards or something. You want to break down through the floorboards, okay? Push down through those floorboards. And that's what we do. Feet back, body weight forwards, break the floorboards, and we just keep on coming up. Doesn't matter how fast or how slow, but I want you to keep on coming until you are tall. Finish the move there. Don't finish the move there okay keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing feet down chest up bums forwards until we are nice and tall of course that's half the move now we've got to sit back down again this tends to it can be a bit easier this one so we reverse the process first of all we stick our bums back okay that's where we want to sit we're not going to sit down because well, we missed the chair. So sit your bum back. And then you kind of just fold under control. You fold yourself down. The bum sits back, tilting forwards. And we end up in exactly that same starting position. Notice how my feet are underneath me. My body weight is forwards. We end exactly how we start. Then we can relax. Do that one more time. So feet back, body weight forwards. This is the position we're going to end up in at the end of the move. Push down all the way. Bum goes back. We fold ourselves under control and we end up in that exact same position with our feet back and our body weight forwards. This is the end point here. And from there, yeah, if we want, we can just relax. But we've finished the actual move. And that's our sit stand. Practice it as much as you can. Even if you're not very good at it, be as good at it as you possibly can. Don't get in the mindset of thinking, I can't do it 100%, so I'm not going to do any of it. No. Do whatever you can do. Even if you're going to do 5%, keep hold of that 5%, okay? Because if we give up, then it's going to end up being 0%. The squat is essentially exactly the same thing, but we start and end tall instead of sitting. Feet are going to be roughly shoulder width apart. So that's too wide. That's too narrow. Your personal shoulder width apart, okay? 
toes are going to be out ever so slightly, probably roughly at a kind of 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock position with our toes. Toes out ever so slightly. Now, like I was saying with a sit, oh, sit down with a chair, first thing we do is we stick our bum back. We break at the hips and we fold at the hips there. The bum sits back. Now, a small move will be just there and we come back up again. And that's the easier version. Fold the hips, go a small amount down and back up. Perfect. And that is level one. Do that until the cows come home. Fantastic. Get confident with that. When you're ready, you do exactly the same thing. Sit back, but then you go down a tiny bit further. And then back up tall again. And repeat that a million times. You go down just a tiny bit further. Fold, down, and up. When you're happy with that, this might take minutes, this might take weeks or months, who knows. But when you're happy with that, you do exactly the same thing. Sit back, go down, and go down as low as you can, whatever depth that is. And then stand back up again. The lower the, you go, the bigger the move, the harder the move, the more your legs are going to have to work. If you feel something in your knees when you're going down, it is probably... The first thing I would look out for is, are you sitting back into it? Usually, if somebody feels it in the knees, they're usually going down as opposed to back. See how my bum is stuck right out there? And my bum is not stuck out at all there? That's normally the case. So if you feel it in your knees, first thing I would try is that really exaggerated, sit the bum back folding like so nine times out of ten that is much nicer on the knees now again i don't know you i can't see you so i don't know what you're doing i can't advise exactly but with all the people i've trained with nine times out of ten when they say their knees are hurting it, we can fix it with that give it a try and let me know if it works for you or not. If it doesn't, then we'll try the next thing. But that is a quick, simple thing which works most of the time. Our knees need to be looked after, so we make our muscles as strong as possible so they can look after the knees. Right then, time to finish. So, that is Technique Tuesday. Like I said, we're back again tomorrow only for Wobble Wednesday. And then it's Christmas time. So I don't know if it'll be me or Anna who's doing it tomorrow. So I will say my happy, my Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's and everything for you now. I'll see you before New Year anyway, actually. But I'll say my Merry Christmas now. Merry Christmas to every one of you. Thank you very much for everything you've been doing. Um, I've had a fantastic time chatting with you all this year so far. Um, and enjoy your Christmas. Look after yourself. And whenever possible, look after somebody else. Because that makes us good. Thank you much, boys and girls. I will see you later on. Bye-bye.